Hello everyone, Alfred Cromwell here, the founder and president of City Tutoring here in speaking to you from Lynchburg, Virginia. And I wanted to take an opportunity because a lot of students, a lot of you have asked me what mathematics, uh, what, what calculus books are we using, uh, do I use at City Tutoring for, for the students who want to take extra calculus reinforcement? And I was, before I said students, by the way, I was, I should have said survivors of this because in a way, all of you watching me, unless you're an instructor, I know, I know a lot of instructors watch me, but I know I get watched by a lot of students as well. And I, I, a lot of you are survivors. You're survivors of this modern, what they call modern educational system. And so it's really, I'm always pleased to being uh, addressing you as always, because we're, I, I feel like I'm standing before a sea of young minds that are, uh, you know, your potential is unfulfilled in a way, but you have potential. And it's also a tragedy because most of you have been led astray by the glossy pages of mediocrity that uh, parade as calculus textbooks in this era. We're living in an era of, my impression is there's, there's certainly been a decline of standards all across the board, not just the decline of moral standards, which has been, you know, the, the moral standards kind of change throughout history. Uh, but what I'm referring to is more of a, a decline in reasoning, an intellectual decline, if you will. And yes, I'm, re I'm referring to a lot of the modern textbooks like the James Stewart's. And then back in the 90s, and we still have some of it today, some echoes today, we have the reformist drivel of Hughes Hallett. And these books were, in a way, the harbingers of the apocalypse in math education that we're seeing. And oftentimes you'll find they promise you simplicity, but at what cost? And the soul of calculus itself. And oftentimes they've traded depth for diagrams that are totally not needed. They've traded rigor for relatability and the elegance for uh, exercises that make you feel good about yourselves without actually know, with, with knowing absolutely nothing, right? So, in fact, I suspect some of you even enjoy them. Of course you do, some of you. Because, you know, oftentimes when you don't have sufficient mathematical maturity, you tend to be tempted by these feel-good strategies, right? It's kind of like almost like a child when they enjoy uh, sugary cereal. It's perhaps sweet, but it leaves you empty within an hour. So, and of course, no nutrients to, to speak of. And when I was personally an undergraduate, we had, we already, you saw the influence of Stuart calculus. But we used, uh, in my particular program, we were, I'm very blessed because we used Michael Spivak's calculus. It's a text that really will, will separate the, the true mathematicians from the dabblers. And Spivak does not spoon feed you. And he serves you a banquet of proofs and demands that you bring your appetite for rigor. He doesn't coddle you with colorful graphics of roller coasters to explain derivatives. And he assumes that if you do not already know what a roller coaster is, you should not be studying calculus in the first place, right? But here we are. We are in an era where even the word proof has been sort of relegated to the uh, to the appendix as though it were some almost like an embarrassing secret. And these modern books they, that, that claim to make calculus accessible. But what they truly do is debase the material. They reduce the the great edifice of mathematical thought. And it kind of makes it gives me the impression of almost like a prefabricated Ikea bookshelf. Right. And I say that I don't say that lightly. Um, I don't like Ikea at all. Uh, so it's easy to assemble, perhaps. But woe unto anyone who leans on it. Right. And we're already seeing things that are in many of the textbooks. Also, uh, the the proofs have been sacrificed completely. In fact, um, I was just recently talking to a student at the at a local college. And he mentioned to me that the, the only thing they do is learn mechanisms of, they learn basically computational stuff, which is fine. I'm not, I'm not against computation, much to the contrary. We could all use more computational exercises, but when you sacrifice rigor, 
then you we, we do have a problem. And the struggle in math, I, I keep saying this over and over, you're not going to become good at math if you do not, if you're if you have an aversion to struggle. And struggle is precisely what these modern texts seek to avoid. You've got authors in their in their so-called benevolence. They're not really being benevolent, but they they perceive themselves as such. And they have decided that you, the students, that you're too delicate for rigor. That the, for example, that the epsilon delta definition of a limit is too intimidating. I've actually heard people tell me that. And yes, I know the Stewart textbook has it before you even say anything. I know you're going to say, well, the Stewart textbook has the uh, epsilon delta definition. But how many of your instructors are actually making you prove it that way? You can let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm wrong, but I have not seen it recently. And they, they make an assumption that you cannot handle abstraction. And so they give you pretty pictures, perhaps. I don't find them pretty, but some of you might. And they give you the so-called applications. They're, they're, they're really mindless applications about population growth, interest rates, as though the calculus were merely the, uh, the handmaiden of biology and economists or, have, heaven forbid, engineers. Heaven forbid that we ever become, that pure mathematics becomes the handmaiden of applied, so-called applied mathematicians. But calculus itself is not the servant of the sciences. It's really their sovereign. It's, it's, the, it's how God communicates certain rational, logical language of the universe. And it was spoken fluently by Newton, Leibniz, and the select few who refused to bow down to the tyranny of the mediocre. Do you think, if you think about, if you're interested in history, do you think Newton would have written the his his great work, the Principia, if he had been, if they gave him a, a copy of Stuart's calculus, he would have probably burned it. And, you know, at that point, I think he would have been highly offended, among other things, to to read something like Stuart's calculus. Now, you might find that what I'm saying is harsh, and that's good. I expect you to. Mathematics is harsh. It's not a democracy. Math doesn't care. Truth doesn't care about your feelings. And we're living in an age where people try to put their feelings above reason. And, be, you know, we even see it sometimes even in the churches. We see that in, in some instances where theology is replaced by sort of feel-good stuff. Um, but, you know, there's a paradox here because it's also the purest form of truth and beauty that you will ever encounter in, in our human system. Um, but only if you're, if, it's only if you're willing to wrestle with it, to struggle, to fail, to rise again. In that struggle, you find certain transcendence. It's meant to be a struggle. So you could put away your candy-coated textbooks. Buy a copy of Spivak. Even Apostle, I like Tom Apostle in a different way, although I prefer Spivak personally in terms of style, but Apostle is fine. Don't let yourself be deceived by the false prophets of reform calculus. They do not wish to teach you math. The only effect that will have is to make you comfortable within your own ignorance. And comfort is the great enemy of greatness. And mathematics, real mathematics, is nothing short of greatness. It is really a cathedral of thought. It's built from a foundation theorem by theorem over centuries. And every time that you crack open some of these textbooks, I feel like you chip away at the foundation. So we need to do better, demand better, and be better. And on that note, thank you. And I will be sharing with you the, the books that I use at City Tutoring. For, because I use a variety of books, but some of the books that I use, it really all depends on the level of the student, right? It's, it's very important to understand what level, what background you've come from. Because, for example, it's not the same to teach someone who is taking AP calculus versus someone who just wants, uh, let's say, you know, they, they, they're already in college and they want a bit more of a rigorous foundation. You know, most students are struggling with Stuart even. They struggle because they don't understand. Again, I, what do I keep saying in all my videos? Again and again and again, the why. Why do you do something a certain way? If you don't understand the why, then you could do all the computation you want, but you're lost. 
I had a student the other day right here in my office and he was standing there and he said, uh, you know, he was just, he was amazed at just how bad uh, the gaps in his knowledge were. So anyway, I'll show you the books. I don't have the physical copies here. I have them in my office, but I'm going to show you the titles in case you're interested and kind of give you some background on them. Thank you. All right. So here are the, these are the two books that we use here that I've been using a lot in the past several semesters here at City Tutoring. Um, it varies between Calculus, A Complete Course by Robert Adams and Christopher Essex. And I've been using Spivak Calculus, the fourth edition. Now, a couple of disclaimers here. A, a lot of the times it varies. These are the books that I use mostly with my college students. I also have college students who come to me. They are already taking courses at the local schools, the local colleges. But they, the reason they come to City Tutoring is because they want actual, like they either one-to-one -one or they want um, a, a setting in which it's more structured, it, like we do at City Tutoring. So uh, they want to be challenged a little bit more and they, they want to take their math a lot more seriously. So we tend to use Spivak for that group. But then I also get Calculus by uh, Robert Adams and Christopher Essex. Uh, is, is a book that I like their approach also, even though they're more, uh, a lot of engineers use their book, but I, I like a lot of the, their approach to the material as well, especially if you're looking for more of a computational um, sort of problem set, because they also do proofs though. So I don't have a problem with that. I like that, that they do proofs and they give you the computational exercises. Some of the problems are actually very, very good quality. So those are the two books that I mostly use. I have another, I have two or three other books that I also use for calculus because some of the students, they're doing advanced placement. That's at the high school level. So at the high school level, uh, we, we tend to switch up things uh, d depending on the level testing of, of the group. Uh, I've used, um, depending on the group, if it's just a college prep course, we've used uh, Saxon's calculus uh, because Saxon has a incremental approach, a spiral approach that I quite like. And of course, we use also sometimes we use the British materials from Edexcel. We use some of the British material. So um, some of the manuals that they have for, for calculus level, pure mathematics as well. So it, it really just depends. Uh, but these books, I, I strongly recommend. One of these days, I'm going to actually do a book review specifically of, on Spivak calculus. Spivak calculus. So if you're interested, by the way, in our calculus courses, for starting in January, please send us an email. You could send us an email to citytutoringmaths at gmail.com. And either myself, if I see the email, even though I try to avoid emails as much as I can, but either myself or my assistant will definitely, my assistant will definitely see your email and we will uh, see what we can do for you. You do have to take a level test though. You do have to take a level test. And de depending on that level test, if you don't do very well on the level test, then you're not qualified to be in the calculus courses. Uh, our enrollment is growing. So we want to make sure that we give you the best that we can. And that is also appropriate. What we are giving you is appropriate to your level. So we offer online courses as well, right? Most of the courses are actually online. I like the online setting. I think it's a, it's a very good thing. Uh, for my high schoolers, though, I, I do a mix of both depending on what they do. However, for testing, that's a little bit more complicated because I, I do not allow uh, calculators on tests of any kind and uh, you have to prove your work. So that takes you know some work because we have to do either lockdown browser, uh, you have to download, a, a, you know, there are several ways. Uh, none of them are 100% what I would like in an online setting, but at least it'll make it more difficult for uh, students who are inclined uh, to to do what they're not supposed to do. Although most of my students, I mean, the college students who come to me, they, they come because they want to. So they're not going to be doing anything inappropriate in that sense. Uh, but my high school students, sometimes they take a little bit more of a, you need more structure with them. You need, they need to be guided more, in other words. So anyway, I hope that this video was helpful. If you're interested in calculus, I definitely strongly urge you to check out these books and uh, see how far you can go. All right, thank you for watching.